Hey guys, welcome back to Jeremy Collin channel. We're here with another unboxing and assembly video. Uh, this one is a little bit more on the lighter side, but uh, still wanted to give you guys a chance to see someone else assemble the model. And we're not sending this to Epic Terrain this time. We're sending this off to Solid Smurf. Uh, so what is the model that we're talking about today? That's right. It's a Salamandra Squadron. Uh, this is a Nomad Tag. Let's go ahead and take a look again at the tabs that come with the Salamandra Squadron tag. This feels like a repeat of quite a few of the other ones. We have a couple wound markers as well as a possession and an immobilization. These are things that are most likely to happen to a tag So and, and potentially some remotes as well. So you'll see these types of tabs often in tags and remotes. Let's take a look at the pieces in the model. Here's the unboxing. Way fewer pieces <laughs> than uh, some of the other tags we've been taking a look at, like the Jotam's tag. Here we only have five pieces. This is a body and leg attaching to the head piece. The second leg, also included in a little baggie, is basically an ammunition belt. And uh, the base. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Really quick unboxing video. Corvus Belly has still been able to get quite a lot of detail on these models, even though it's not, you know, 700 pieces like some of the other models. So that's the unboxing video. We'll get uh, the assembly from Smurf, attach them two together, and so stick around. The assembly's coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to the Solid Smurf channel. Uh, this is going to be a quick cleaning video of the Nomad tag. I think it's pronounced Sazlamandra? I don't know. Um, so for these first few steps, just grab your sharp hobby knife, start clean up, use your file, you know what you're doing. Uh, I will be back with more narration when more stuff's happening. Yarrow. Enjoy.
we're back. Okay, so here I'm doing the base, of course, with my normal tile work that I really, really like to do. So again, just picked up this plastic card, cut out your section, put it on, clip off. So pretty straightforward. No big surprises here, guys. Just clamp away. And that's that. Now, as you put it together, these tags, always make sure to dry fit everything um, that is prone in all infinity models that they're going to have problems so prepare for that and dry fit dry fit dry fit that's totally normal so that being said this is me dry fitting and pinning this is just basic assembly Alright guys, here in a second you're going to see me use some blue tack, and what that is for is, if you look, I, I, pill, I drill my holes and then I put some blue tack on the opposite end. And what you can do with that is mash your other piece against it like so, and, well that, that one stuck a little hard, but anyways, you mash it against it, a little water might help it not stick as much, and what it'll do is it'll give you a little nub, and that'll help you line up your penning exactly. Sometimes the paint method doesn't work, but the blue tack tends to grab pretty well, and you'll get a perfect pin, I would say about 95% of the time, which is pretty good odds. And then you just pin as normal. So we've had a new tool in the fray, and that is my Dremel tool. Um, I do use a Dremel for bigger pieces, especially large metal pieces like this tag or a large war machine project or anything like that. Um, what's nice about the Dremel tool is it'll go fast, but you have to be careful because sometimes the the bit will catch. So to alleviate this, you can see I have a little tea light candle right there. Uh, just dip the the drill bit into that, and it'll give it a little bit of waxy lubricant won't catch it'll help save your fingers it'll it'll make pinning that much easier sometimes i even will do this with my hand drill if i'm having a lot of problems so uh you might be wondering what i'm doing right here in the video i'm actually putting in um holes into the top and here in a second i'll do the bottom as well and what that's going to do is i'm going to use some jb weld uh, to actually secure the top and bottom of the tag together. Now, when you're using the JB Weld, the reason I drilled the holes was somewhere for the JB Weld to ooze into, so that way it didn't come out the sides. It actually went into the pieces and gave a better hold. So keep that in mind. Also, a little side note, when using JB Weld to secure models, um, be sure that you give it at least 24 hours to dry. I went 36 on mine, and I was not disappointed. So here's the finish of the base. Just we're going to keep on going.
at this step, I was a little annoyed with the barrel on the, the larger cannon out of the two guns. So I grabbed a drill bit out of my Dremel tool that was about the right size, and I'm just going to give it a little depth. So I had a little problems with my hand drills, so I had to find the right one. But if you think it'll look better, hollow out your gun barrels, because nine times out of ten it will look better. You know, when I Once I do some weathering on it, it's probably going to look dark enough that you won't notice it, but still it's going to be there for someone with a critical eye. Alright guys, at this point we're almost all the way done and there's going to be some fancy editing because these little ammo belts that originally were supposed to go on the model caused me a lot of problems. They kept, they're they segmented so they kept bending and breaking because you were supposed to bend them, uh, but they kept breaking into individual segments and it, they just would not glue. It, it's a poor design on the model so I talked to 
a Dorema column about it and decided to go with a a cabled look instead. So I grabbed my guitar string and went at it. So you might have seen some fancy editing a few seconds ago or just kind of cut and you're like, whoa, what happened? That's okay. That's because I cut out a lot of the footage of me failing because this would have been a really long video otherwise. But in short, I didn't like it. So um, actually, you can see it's kind of springy. I coiled it around a paintbrush to give it some depth. Um, that overall really like the guitar string look uh, where it plugs into the legs I actually gave it a little bit of a uh, like a cover to help like a dust cover to help protect that part of the model um, overall it just looked a lot better this way and it was more playable I ended up using green stuff you'll see here in a second to actually seal it into the two holes so that way when it slip out and that seemed to work just fine a little glue a little green stuff goes a long way so when you're assembling this model if you can get the belt feed to work good on you I could not. So see me trim and play and that's that. Alright guys, at this point, 
I'm going to put some plastic card rods on the base just to give a little bit of depth. I don't like to add anything too tall to bases in games where height matters and visibility matters just because I don't want it to give an unfair advantage to my opponent. So games like you know, Warhammer or Infinity where height and line of sight is a big deal going to keep the base pretty much as flat as possible. Games like War Machine, it doesn't matter so much because there's a standardized height model. So do keep that in mind as you assemble and as you build your stuff. Here in a second I'm going to get fed up with this glue and I'm just going to use some green stuff and some glue to put it back in uh, on these these nodules on the back. I don't even know what they're called. They're kind of like rods, but um, do pay attention to how these go in and where they go. Use any glue points you can and a little green stuff or epoxy won't hurt. So good luck with that. They're kind of frustrating, but again, like I said, the green stuff set them in just fine and took care of that so they were kind of you couldn't really pin them because it was a ball joint connection that was about the width of your pin so you're gonna have to look to something else but they weren't you know once I got past the frustration of just trying to use glue and gave into the green stuff no problems at all And that is that guys. I um, hope you enjoyed as much as I enjoyed making this video and putting this together. Uh, big thanks to Doramicon for providing the model and letting me do this. 
Hope you all have fun building. Have a good, safe hobby experience. Take care.